Hello everyone. Today we are going to solve the problem of a cantilever bar that is subjected to uniformly varying axial load by weak form method. We have already seen the importance of weak form and why it is very crucial to the concept of finite element analysis. Remember in this lecture series we are not actually saying the concept of finite element analysis. We are actually in the process of understanding the birth of finite element analysis. So in order for you to wrap your mind around the birth of finite element analysis, it is very crucial. It is of cosmic importance that you understand solving the governing differential equation by weak form method. Okay, today we are going to solve this particular problem. You can see that there is a cantilever bar. Why it is a bar? Why not a cantilever beam? It is a bar because it is subjected to axial load. You see that the load is acting along the axial direction. Now, what is the type of load that is acting? The load that is acting is uniformly varying axial load. That is, that is very important. It is uniformly varying axial load. It is not uniformly distributed axial load. So there is a profound difference between uniformly distributed axial load, which is UDL, and uniformly varying axial load, which is UVL. Okay. I have also represented the geometric properties. The length is represented by capital L. The cross-sectional area is represented by capital A here. And what is the material with which this particular bar is made of? This bar is made of material that has got an Young's modulus value of magnitude capital E. So since we are trying to derive a very generic equation, the Young's modulus is simply represented as capital E. Of course, it is a material property. It varies from one material to another material. On the right-hand side, you can see that I have written the governing differential equation. If you are wondering how we actually get this governing differential equation, I have already derived the governing differential equation in the previous videos. So if you are very curious about deriving the governing differential equation, which of course will be very, very interesting if you understand, in order to, for you to understand how we actually deriving the governing, how we actually derive the governing differential equation, it is very interesting. So I highly recommend you also watch that video. We have derived the governing differential equation. So the governing differential equation is AE into D squared U by DX squared plus AX is equal to zero. So that is the governing differential equation for this particular physical scenario. Remember, the entire world is governed by governing differential equation. So this is the governing differential equation for this particular physical scenario. You change the physical scenario. For example, you change the loading condition from uniformly varying to uniformly distributed. The governing differential equation also changes slightly. That's my phone. Sorry, excuse me. Okay, now I also represented the boundary conditions. Uh, what about the boundary conditions? The displacement, one boundary condition is quite axiomatic. The displacement at the left extreme end, that is going to be zero because it is it is a cantilever bar. The displacement at the left extreme end is going to be zero. It is fixed. And you see that the strain on the right extreme end is going to be zero. I have given explanation for that also. So, for example, a series of persons hanging onto the ceiling, for example, you hanging onto a ceiling, for example, your foot is not going to experience any strain at all. So it is an analogy. I have given, explained this analogy in, pre, in the previous videos. So du by dx at x is equal to l is going to be zero. That is the boundary condition. And here you can see that I have put a blue color box. In that box, you are seeing an equation. That is the weak form of this particular governing differential equation. So in the previous video, we have already derived this weak form of this particular governing differential equation. Okay. Now you look at this weak form. Just pay attention to this weak form a little bit. What is demanded in this weak form? So I'm going to represent that by this red color. Look first, what is demanded in this weak form is this Wi, that is demanded. So I'll use red color. Wi is demanded in this weak form. By the way, what is this I? 
w i what is this i i the suffix can take integer values 1 2 3 and it goes on so you see when you say i is equal to 1 it means that you are talking about w1 which means you are talking about the first weighing condition first weighing function to be very precise so you can understand what is this wi so it is it is just neatly packaged and represented in the weak form equation so i can take values integer values one two three four so on so forth when you say i is equal to one you are talking about w1 which is the first weighing function we will see how we can squeeze out the weighing functions later but for now just remember when you say i is equal to one you are talking about the first weighing function okay so we are clear with this we will see how we can actually get the weighing functions now look at this particular equation dwi by dx when you say i is equal to one you are talking about dw1 over dx okay so if you have a weighing function you can differentiate that weighing function and you can find dw1 by dx so that is not going to be a big problem so we can also find that and what is this du by dx suppose you have an equation for u see i'm writing that here like a naught plus a one x plus a two x square so on so forth it just goes on you can find du by dx that is not a big deal and you can just feed these values now let us see how we can squeeze out the values of weighing functions squeeze out dwi by dx squeeze out du by dx and all you have to do is go ahead and substitute in this particular weak form equation turn the crack of mathematics and let us see what we actually get so let us do that first what is what we need is a trial solution so the trial solution that i am going to assume is u of x is equal to a naught plus a one x plus a two x squared I will stop right here you may ask me this question why is that you are not writing a 3x cube i'm not writing a 3x cube the reason is because if you solve this problem by ordinary galakin's weighted residual method you would have assumed a 3x cube now i'm not assuming a 3x cube because in weak form you see the order of the governing differential equation is reduced the order here is 2 but in the weak form the order of the governing differential equation is reduced to from 2 here the order is simply 1 since the order is reduced I am cutting down one term I am just removing one term in the trial solution so I am very clear in what I am doing the order is reduced so I am actually removing one term in the trial solution so that is the justification so you have to remove one term because the order that is demanded in the governing differential equation is reduced okay what is the next step apply the boundary conditions remember when you apply the boundary condition first apply only the essential boundary conditions you don't have to apply the derived boundary conditions i will give the explanation for that also so first let me apply the essential boundary condition what is the essential boundary condition the first boundary condition is saying that the displacement at the left extreme end is going to be zero so if you apply this particular boundary condition in this equation immediately you can get the value of a naught because x terms all become zero u is zero so a naught will become zero so we can modify our trial solution a little bit so i will write that also let me modify the trial solution the modified trial solution is u of x is equal to a1 x plus a2 x square okay the reason for not applying the derived boundary condition we touched on this topic a little bit in the previous video but i'm also going to explain this 
So I will like give this explanation in a fresh page. The reason for not applying the derived boundary condition. Okay, suppose you have an equation, a trial solution like a naught plus a one x, a simple trial solution. For time being, I'm assuming a trial solution, something like this. So if you plot the displacement curve by taking u along the y-axis and x along the x-axis, the displacement curve is a linear straight line. It is a linear but inclined straight line. If you are applying the derived boundary condition, for example, du over dx at x is equal to l is 0. This is the derived boundary condition. If you are going to apply this particular boundary condition on this trial solution, what happens is the value of a1 becomes 0. If you apply this particular boundary condition, the value of a1 becomes 0. So what happens to the trial solution is the trial solution u of x simply becomes a0 which is a constant. So instead of getting a better solution like this, you are going to get a curve which is simply going to be a horizontal line. So this is here, which means that, what, what does it mean? It means that the displacement is constant at each and every point. That is the meaning. I will repeat this. It is very crucial. The displacement is constant at each and every point of the bar which is obviously not true, which is a very poor approximation. So you see, when you apply the derived boundary conditions, the solution becomes very poor. The solution becomes very, very poor, right? Because you are, you are making the curve flat, because you are flattening this line. You see, it is a horizontal straight line. So which is a very bad idea because the displacement becomes constant at each and every point, which obviously is not true. For our physical scenario so that is the reason for not applying the derived boundary condition okay let us do it now okay now we have got let me take a fresh page let me continue this problem okay now what is going to be the next step what is demanded in the weak form what is demanded in the weak form in weak form du by dx is demanded so I can really find that du by dx is a1 plus 2a2x. I got it. What else is demanded in weak form? In weak form, w1 is demanded. What is w1, by the way? It is simply x. Now, how do I know that? Because this is going to be our w1 this is going to be our w2 where w1 and w2 are weighing functions by definition weighing functions are nothing but trial solutions with the constants stripped out you strip out the constant a1 and a2 you will be left out with two trial solutions i'm sorry two weighing functions one weighing function is x another weighing function is x squared so i got what is w1 I got W2. So W1 and W2 I got. Now what is DW1 by DX? That is simply 1. And what is DW2 by DX? DW2 by DX. That is 2X. Okay. Now, I'm going to feed all these values in the weak form equation, but I cannot feed all these values in one go. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to substitute i is equal to 1 in the weak form equation. So, you go and look at this weak form. Okay, in weak form, if you put i is equal to 1, you can find du by dx, which we have already computed. You have already computed dw1 by dx. You have already computed w1. So, you will get one equation. After getting the first equation, you have to substitute i is equal to 2. You will be getting the second equation. Solve those two equations to get the constants a1 and a2 in the trial solution. So I will repeat this. You have to burn this particular concept, particular mathematical procedure in your brain. Substitute i is equal to 1. 
get the first equation substitute i is equal to 2 get the second equation solve the two equations to get the values of a1 and a2 let us do that okay for i is equal to 1 what happens to the weak form equation weak form equation is a e i'm taking that a e outside into du by dx du by dx is simply a1 plus 2a2x that is du by dx what is dw1 by dx dw1 by dx is simply 1 into dx is equal to a into integral over the limit 0 to l of course we are integrating it throughout the entire domain wi now this time wi becomes w1 so w1 is x already there is an x so x into x becomes x squared into dx okay now i'm going to substitute i'm going to integrate and substitute the limits directly so let me do that if you substitute integrate directly you will be getting a1l i'm going to bring this ae to the right hand side i'll be taking this ae i'll be throwing it on the right hand side plus if you integrate 2a to x you get x squared over 2 but 2 in the numerator 2 in the denominator they vanish so it simply becomes a2 x square is equal to a, if you integrate x squared, you get x cube over 3. So upon the substitution of the limits, you get l cube over 3. So a l cube over 3. I'm bringing this a to the right hand side. So it goes to the denominator. It is 3a. So that will be my first equation. So let me put a nice box here. That will be my first equation. Now, in order for me to get the second, look at this first equation. There are two unknowns, a1 and a2. In order for you to squeeze out the values of a1 and a2, you have to get the second equation. Second equation can be obtained by putting i is equal to 2. So, uh, let me take a fresh page and let me continue that. Okay, now, when you substitute i is equal to 2, what happens to this weak form equation? It is a e integral over the limit 0 to l du by dx it is simply a1 plus 2 a2 x into dw2 over dx what is dw2 over dx dw2 over dx is 2x so that is 2x into dx you are integrating with respect to x is equal to a into integral over the limit 0 to l x into w2 w2 is x squared so x into x squared that becomes x cube of course they have to integrate it with respect to x now bring this to outside the integral because it is a constant you can take it outside the integral that, so if you bring this to outside the integral it becomes 2a i will be taking this 2a to the right hand side so keep that in mind and bring this x inside so i will write that here integral over the limit 0 to l a1 x plus 2 a2 x square of course you have to integrate it with respect to x is equal to small a divided by 2 a i'm bringing this a to the right hand side of course i'm also bringing this 2 to the right hand side and you can simply integrate this particular equation. Uh, the, I don't think we have to wait. Okay, we, we can simply integrate. What is integral of x cube? It is x power 4 over 4. Upon the substitution of the limits, it is l power 4 divided by 4. Okay, now go ahead and integrate this particular equation. What is that you are going to get? You are going to get a1 into l square over 2 plus 2a2 into l cube over 3 is equal to a l raised to the power 4 divided by 8 a e 
Okay, let me rearrange this particular equation and let me see what is that I'm going to get. Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm in order to rearrange this equation, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to multiply by 2 and I'm going to multiply by 2 on both the left hand side and on the right hand side. If I multiply by 2 on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I'll be doing no damage to this equation. So let me take a fresh page. So multiply by 2 this particular equation on the left hand side and on the right hand side. Let me see what is that I'm going to get. I'll be getting a1 l square, right, plus 4a2 l cube, plus 4a2 l cube divided by 3 is equal to, if you multiply by 2 on the right hand side, you get a l power 4 divided by 4 a, a l power 4 divided by 4 a. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide by l squared both on the left hand side and on the right hand side. If I divide by l squared on the left hand side, I'm going to get a1 plus 4 a2 l over 3 is equal to if I divide by L squared on the right hand side, it becomes A L squared divided by 4 A E. Okay, that is going to be our second equation. Now all I have to do is solve the two equations. So first, let me solve the two equations. So by solving the two equations in the sense, find what is 2 minus 1. Now, what is 2 minus 1? The first term is a1 in the second equation. The first term is also a1 in the first equation. So, they go, they just go away. The second term is 4 by 3 a2l minus a2l. Okay. That is equal to al squared divided by 4a minus a l square whole divided by 3a okay now take this a to l which is a common term i'm sorry take this a to l in this equation which is a common term just take them outside sorry about this okay you take this a to l which is common outside you will be left with 4 over 3 minus 1 is equal to a l square whole divided by a e. What is that? You will be getting on the right hand side. It is 1 by 4 minus 1 over 3. You can cancel this 1 l on the left hand side and 1 l on the right hand side. Now all you have to do is find the value of a2. That's not a big deal. It is a2, if you simplify this, 4 minus 3, a2 over 3 is equal to al divided by ae. If you simplify this, it is minus al divided by 12a. So you can readily find what is a2. a2 is equal to minus al divided by 4a. So that is the value of A2. I got the value of A2. All I need to do now is to find the value of A1. You know where we are heading. In order to find A1, you just go and, and substitute the value of A2 either in equation number 2 or in equation number 1. I will just go ahead and substitute the value of A2 in equation number 1, guys. So what, what is equation number 1? It is A1 plus A2L is equal to AL squared over 3a so a2 i'm going to substitute a2 is minus al divided by 4a into l so that becomes l square that is equal to al square divided by 3a okay now what is a1 a1 is equal to al square divided by 3a plus al squared divided by 4a. So
So what is the value of a1? a1 is equal to 7 a l square divided by 12 a. I got the value of a1 guys. Now everything is over. We got the values of a1. We got the value of a2. All I have to do is go ahead and substitute the values of a1 and a2 in the trial solution. That is our going to be our solution to the problem of your... Okay, let me take a fresh page. The solution I'm going to write u of x is equal to a1x. What is a1? 7 a l square divided by 12 a into x. a1 squared, I'm sorry, a1x plus a2x squared. What is a2? Minus a l divided by 4 a e into x squared. That is the solution. That is the solution to the problem of your cantilever bar that is subjected to uniformly varying axial load by weak form method. We have solved this particular problem by weak form method. This is the solution, which is exactly correct. Now, my point here is that we didn't apply, remember, we didn't apply the essential, I'm sorry, the derived boundary condition, which is du over dx is equal to L. Now, what, what I'm I'm sorry, du over dx at x is equal to L is equal to 0. We didn't apply this particular boundary condition. Now, if we apply this boundary condition and if you do this problem, if you solve this problem, the solution that you are going to get, as I told you earlier, is going to be less accurate. It's going to be less accurate. Now, if you solve the same problem, let me take a fresh page. If you solve the same problem, by not by weak form but by using ordinary Galerkin's weighted residual method our usual Galerkin's weighted residual method Galerkin's weighted residual method if you solve the same problem by Galerkin's weighted residual method sorry to repeat this I just wanted to emphasize this concept by assuming a trial solution like a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared Okay, usually you will be assuming a 3x cube also, but I am recommending you to solve the problem by assuming by a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. Please remove the third term and do this problem. The solution will be less accurate. Why? That is quite straightforward because we have just cut down one term. We have removed one term. So that's not a surprise, the solution should be less accurate now this solution i'm sorry this particular solution which you can call it as solution one and the solution obtained by solving the same problem by weak form Except that you have to assume you have to apply the derived boundary condition also. Apply the derived boundary condition also. Derived boundary condition, which is du by dx at x is equal to L is going to be zero. We can call this a solution to surprisingly both the solution one and solution two will be equal remember the solution will be less accurate why less accurate because you have cut down one term you have removed this term right so the solution is going to be less accurate if the solution is less accurate and if solution one and solution two are going to be equal solution two is also less accurate right so this is another way to say that if you apply the derived boundary condition, the solution that you are going to get is going to be less accurate. Now we will compare the solutions, right? We are going to compare the solutions, guys. Now I'm going to project the graph. Just watch. Okay, now you can see the graphs. They have compared three solutions. Along the x-axis of the graph is taken the axial location, which is an arbitrary location at a particular point in the bar. 
along the y-axis is the displacement corresponding to that particular location. They have compared three solutions and you can see that the triangle here, so I will represent that triangle by this red here, the triangle, wherever you see the triangle, spot that, that is the exact solution. So here, there is a triangle 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 here, and it goes on. So if you trace the path of the triangle, and the triangle shifts over here. The triangle, there is a triangle here, there is a triangle here. Of course, it is very hard, difficult to look, but there is a triangle here, here, and it has taken this path. If you trace the triangles very closely, that is the exact solution. Our objective is to try our best mathematically to go hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder with the exact solution, right? And the cube, I'm sorry, the square that you see here is the solution that we just got by weak form method by assuming a quadratic trial solution that is a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. So that trial solution, okay? So if you trace the path of the square, the squ there is a square here, square here, so on and so forth. If you trace that path, that is the solution that is obtained by quadratic weak form method, okay? And if you do the same problem by Galerkin's weighted residual method, by assuming the same trial solution, a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, which is represented by diamond here, you see that the diamond is deviating, the diamond is deviating right here, that, see that the diamond solution is deviating, which means Galerkin's weighted residual method is deviating from the exact solution, particularly when the value of x becomes equal to l. In this case, x is equal to 1. So particularly when x becomes equal to 1. Why do you think the solution is deviating? Because you are applying the derived boundary condition, which is du by dx at x is equal to l. The string at x is equal to l becomes 0. Since you are applying, since you are applying the derived boundary conditions there, what happens is the solution becomes more flat. The curve becomes tries to become flat at x is equal to l. So this is an axiomatic proof that you should not be applying the derived boundary conditions when you solve the problem by weak form method. If you are applying the derived boundary condition, you better increase the number of terms in the trial solution. That is the explanation, guys. So let us do further problems. Thank you all for your patience, radiate hope, and do amazing work. Thank you.